Welcome everyone. I see Aksha here. Joanna's here. Stacy is here. Good evening, Stacy. Elizabeth. Uh... Oh, Aksha joins with your uh, note taker. I see here. Oh. That's fancy. You can, you, can kick, you can kick it out if you want. Can... That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. That's okay. We are recording the session as well. So. Beautiful. Well, we're waiting for everyone to join in. So here it is, the music on the background. I hope it's not too loud. If it is, let me know and I can DJ a bit around that. My name's Anne-Marie. I'm tuning in from Amsterdam today. So it's morning. It's 10 in the morning for me. I am curious, where in the world are you today? So here's our check-in question. Do share in the chat your name, your role, where in the world you are today. And what's your favorite way to take care of your well-being, your own well-being, to take care of yourself. Let's see what we have there. What little strategies do we have? Welcome Magda, Fatima, we are sharing main role and your favorite way to take care of your personal well-being. Let's see what we have here. Also hi from Amsterdam by the way. Anime. Oh hey! <laughs> Neighbors! <laughs> okay, let's see what we have. Nature of course, exercise, well done. Is say Salma. Salma, I gotta share the secrets because exercise is not really my strength. <laughs> walk in nature, recharge, take a walk. Daily we pass in a meditation. That's beautiful, Ashai. Boxing, there we go. Anissa bringing in the heat here. <laughs> Fiction, yes, same here. Fiction every evening. It's mandatory for decompression, disconnecting from social media. Here, here. Friends, pets. Okay, animals, nature, pets, boxing, moving our bodies. Beautiful. Let me kill the music here. And thank you everyone for sharing. I want to give a big welcome to our host today. She's going to share more about uh, herself. Uh, welcome, Melissa Duki. She's the head of talent driving organizational change and performance at Mind Valley. Very excited to have you with us today, Melissa. Take it away. And if you need anything, I'm here in the back end. I'm your co-pilot. Thank today. you very much, Anna Maria. Hello, everyone. Nice to see you. Nice to see the faces. Thanks for sharing the camera. So feel free if you want to put it on as well, too. So before we get into it, um, just to do a bit of introduction of myself. Um, so I been working at Mind Valley now for just about a year and a half. I come from the Caribbean. That's my home, my home region. I've moved around, I would say, the last seven years for work. Um, I've been in Malaysia now for 10 months and enjoying it. I have been enjoying my time at Mind Valley as well, too. It's been very, very rewarding. Um, Work-wise, I think I'm probably now, I would say about 22, 23 years work experience in, in HR, mainly in acquisition. That's my foundation. And I have moved on into general uh, HR probably the last, I would say, five years or so. Um, and uh, love doing, um, I think HR is very rewarding for me. And there are a number of different aspects that I find quite rewarding, including l &D. So my job in uh, Mind Valley at the moment is as head of talent management. We do, uh, in my function, we cover HR business partnering and development. So those two pillars fall under my portfolio in the current role. So I want this session to probably be more interactive. I would love to hear from you guys um, what experiences that you have, what sort of initiatives uh, you've experienced or have in your current organizations around well-being. Um, so feel free to uh, you know, unmute yourself and share your stories or put it in the chat and we'll cover it. So. 
All right, so let's get started. Um, I don't want to go over time because I know time is of the essence of everyone. So I'll just start sharing. Let me know when you can see our screen. Yes, there we go. Beautiful. Right. Awesome. So let's get started. So our world of working, our workspace has changed tremendously, as you guys know, right? So I think post-COVID now, work environment is very different. Also, our workforce is very different. We find a lot of uh, different uh, generational groups now uh, in the workforce, as well as different ways of working. In Mind Valley, for instance, we it's a remote first work company. So we have a lot of people who work remotely, work from home, et cetera. And two years ago, uh, my boss, Alex Goliotti, who you guys will meet soon, um, had to come up with a model to incorporate all of this. And uh, I think it's the time where in that strategy moment, you do need to take more, um, you need, do need to prioritize well-being because of those changes that have happened in the workforce, right? So when we speak about whole being, it's, you know, it's, you need to define it because I think everyone's interpretation of it will be very different. So it's, I, I liked this uh, definition of it where it says it nurtures all dimensions of an employee's life. So the usual mental health, uh, personal well being, emotional uh, balance physical health, professional growth, and even social connections, because all of that contributes to the whole being of an individual, right? So when we speak about personal well-being, it's about the individual's preferences, because everyone is different. And, you know, as HR professionals, l and professionals, we do need to be aware of those preferences. Mental health referring to, you know, um, prioritizing that mental health of the individual, you know, providing resources to stress management and also fostering a supportive working environment, right, is important for us. Emotional, uh, emotional balance encourages emotional intelligence, empathy, open communication because you're working with so many different individuals. And like I said, everyone is quite different. So you have to acknowledge that and also respect that as well too and expect the same respect for yourself physical health you know promoting healthy habits um providing wellness programs um in the or in your organizations as well as social connections now this for me really sort of you know i hold it very close to my heart because you spend so much time in the office sometimes or with your work colleagues that there is a social element of it and you do have to um it, because you're spending so much time with these people, you, you want to ensure that, you know, the connections that you make are fruitful as well. And of course, professional growth, it, you know, just ensuring that uh, when you work in an organization, you're conscious of your own growth, but also as an employer, ensuring that you provide growth for your individuals. So. Right. So it's just an understanding of what do we holistically look at when we say whole being and it, in, it incorporates these six elements. Okay. Now let's go into now the, these couple slides, the first few slides, uh, a lot of us will know it. It's just sort of reiterating some of the things that we already know so that it's forefront in our, in our minds. Now, why do, why do we think that it's important to nurture whole being of your staff? Of course, enhance well-being, which leads to increased mental health, physical health, reducing burnout, which is quite a common thing these days with, uh, with uh, individuals. It, and in the end, it promotes job satisfaction. It promotes the work-life balance and general happiness for your staff. If you have a happy staff, you're going to get increased productivity, right? And one of the statistics that I came across was that companies that actually do wellness programs have seen a 26 reduction 26 percent uh, reduction in health costs but also a 26 28 uh, percent reduction in sick leave right you know so many times as managers as well too people just need mental health days and they take sick leave you know so if we provide 
if we provide opportunities to manage that within the organization, we can see this reduction, as well as improved performance for the business, right? So foster, it, it fosters high level of engagement, motivation, and as a result of productivity, right? It uh, encourages creativity of your staff, the innovation of your staff, and the problem solving, because if they are stressed, they are not going to have the mindset to be like this, right? Um, I just want to shift over my chat here. And then organizational growth. It attracts and retains top talent, fostering positive and inclusive work culture. And at the end of the day, this is what we want as businesses as well. And this uh, focusing on well-being and fostering that culture, that nature in your environment, ideally in the long run, contributes to this right it creates a foundation for long-term stability and success not only for the individuals but also for the business right and what we found is that companies with effective recognition programs have seen a 31 percent lower voluntary turnover rates and that's really good that's a very high percent right so it's important to remember and later down in the presentation we'll get into the challenges that we face because it's good to say this but in reality we will face challenges when we try to do these things now let's get into the good stuff here now how that lost my mouse how do we actually can you hear us, Melissa? Yeah, sorry. I think my internet. Can you guys hear me? You're back. We hear you now. Your image is frozen still, but it's probably going to reboot. Probably a reboot, yes. So the internet probably just uh, shut down for a bit. So let's get into, um, I'll just take the video off for a bit and I'll just put it back on in a sec. So let's get into uh, how do we actually implement uh, the whole being approach into our environments and our work uh, organizations, right? So I skipped one slide, one sec, there we go. Right, so there are a number of ways that we can implement well-being, but and, and the list goes on, right? But what I've done here is sort of categorized it in four main categories that sort that consolidates a lot of those different ideas, right? So wellness programs, which is quite common, growth opportunities, work-life balance, and supportive work culture, right? I think a lot of different initiatives can fall into these different categories. So let's go into the wellness culture. So what I've done is, uh, you know, I'm sure I, I want you guys to share, but what I've shared here also is some of the case studies for companies that we know um, and what they have done, right? And maybe you guys are doing the same thing in your organization. Maybe you're doing something different, right? So Unilever uh, provides mental health resources and counseling services. They've got an EAP, as most companies do, right? And they provide that uh, benefit to their employees. They also do mental health awareness campaigns and trainings and stress management workshops, right? At Aetna, what they do is that they integrate mindfulness and mental health practices in their daily routine, which is fantastic for an organization to do. So so what they do is they have meditation classes, uh, mindfulness classes, and they provide these to the employees e even during after working hours as well. And the results that they have seen is that it's significantly reduced stress levels and include and increase the employee overall well-being. Right now at Mind Valley, what we do is so I don't know how familiar you guys are with the company, but. Uh, we have a number of online platforms on our um, on our website and on, on our application that provides courses that can help towards uh, overall well-being. And we provide every single employee in our business has full access to this platform. So they can uh, 
they can log in when they have time, et cetera, do the programs. And we also have in each of our offices, we provide meditation rooms. In the KL office where I'm based at the moment, we actually also have sleeping pods. Now it's not really used, right? Uh, post COVID, I would say, but the meditation rooms in both offices, I've been to both offices, um, the meditation rooms are used. So we give them free access to that, right? Now, those are some good examples some common ones as well too but what I would do it's what I would like to do is hear from you guys oh I sorry I forgot this slide these are a couple of the examples of the uh, courses that we have on our online platform so Ronan does a fantastic physical um, it's called 10x um, and uh, it's advanced home workouts that you have access to so employees can go in when they have the time to do it and then you know uh, utilize it Paul McKenna's course, which is called Everyday Bliss, is a very popular course with our customers and with our employees as well. And it's uh, focusing on reduction of stress through hypnosis, right? A very interesting course um, and very popular, like I said. So our employees have, you know, can go in, decide what they want to use and, you know, utilize our platform. So... I would love to hear from you guys in the chat, or if you want to share and unmute yourself, um, what sort of initiatives do, uh, do you have in your companies for, sorry. Oh, where do we go? Yeah, what sort of initiatives do you have in your company, wellness initiatives, do you have in your company that you guys practice? If anyone's brave enough and wants to share, Ah, Magda. You Hi. Got the mic. Hi. Hi. Hello. Thanks a lot for a very interesting session. I think that well-being is super important. My my name is Magda. I'm a career coach right now, self-employed. I am I am actually doing coaching with uh, Mind Valley for oh, life coaching. Know. Yes, but <laughs> what I wanted to share is I definitely believe in the social connection as one of the very important factors for you know building the culture and making everyone accepted and part of it. And what I did in was one of my previous jobs was we create, we had like an online Christmas party for remote, um, everyone was working remotely, and we created digital Christmas trees under which everyone could put a gift, a little card with what I appreciated about you this year. And then we all opened our gifts under the Christmas tree in that call, and that was a really nice experience because it was very much about gratitude and, you know, appreciating each other, and also you feel you're getting something, but you're also sharing and so this social element, I really, really love that. I just wanted to share it maybe for Christmas That's coming lovely. up, you know, in a couple of months. <laughs> I love that idea because we, you know, there is a section on um, uh, engagement that we'll get into, but I absolutely love that idea. Because we, we do have a challenge with our remote workers to try to include them in a lot of the things that we do because they are dispersed, you know, very, very widely. I like the idea of the stress sessions. Um, we, you know, without officially doing it, uh, we did have a colleague in uh, our Estonian office uh, who would do that. And it's just very random because, uh, you know, our, our workforce in Estonia was very small. And he would just come in and just sort of pull everyone together and just do stretching sessions. He he was very good at doing headstands. So he used to like to do that as well too. And we also had another colleague who uh, did Zumba sessions in the class, in, um, in the office. So she was training to be a Zumba instructor. And as part of it, she wanted to share that experience with the with us in the office and set up sessions. And we did that as well, too. And it, at the end, I, I, I did it a couple of times with her. And I remember it was, you know, she pulled us away from our computers and she had us, you know, change and do it just in the in the open area in the office. And it was such a stress reliever. When you're sitting at your lap at, at your laptop and uh, you're just into into the work and it was such a nice break for us so. stacy yes the mic's coming Sorry. to you yeah so um let's go on then to the next sorry one. melissa we have a hand raised from stacy oh sorry oh, sorry yes sorry no, no, no worries. Stacey. So, something Stacey. something that we do um at work as well uh and again it's in the new zealand context so in um the maori 
uh, worldview. They have something called a karakia. Um, so what a karakia is, it's <laughs> It's like a prayer, but it's not really like a prayer, but it's a setting to open up the day. So we have that on the start of a Monday and a close off on a Friday. Um, and that's a virtual session and people can join whenever they want to, but it's opening your week and going and they choose a specific kind of care for the week. They'll have a bit of a conversation around that. And it's also an opportunity. We are going through a lot of change at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. So it also opens that a floor for people to say, hey, I'm not doing okay. Um, and then people will then provide support and and um, thinking around, okay, how can we support? And like I said, the Tafari Tapafa uh, model that we use like mentally, socially, f uh, family orientated, like where are you lacking? Where's your wall that is not structured enough because this is your fare which is your house and we know if one of the pillars falls down your house will collapse your roof will come in so it's around providing that safe space for people to share um in the beginning it was a handful of people and now we've grown to about a hundred people that join those calls wow. at any given time when, um when they need to um and then the friday session is literally like a close off for that week so it goes we understand the stuff that we've gone through, we leave that behind. Let's close off the week, enjoy time with the family, go back into nature, connect with the land, and then come back for the week ahead. So we do that, which was quite different to to what I've experienced before. And then we have the general uh, counselors on site and the apps wow. and uh, health first mental health first responders as well. So that's employees who get trained, um, and they're the first con point of contact if people um, wow. need support as well wow that's really good did and is that session run from your hr team or is it that you sort of rotate with people uh, hosting those sessions is that the karakia session yeah. are you talking mm -hmm. about that no so that's yeah. purely employee-led ah okay mm -hmm. very nice mm -hmm. so that is a uh, yeah, yeah, and everybody then takes a turn. So then we'll put put up the hand this week, and it's like I'll take this session, and then the next week somebody else will put up their hand. So that's it's really just that community of people who decide this is where I'm going to show up, and this is where we take on the responsibility. So it's not a driven initiative from HR. I see. That's very nice. It's good to get that um, engagement, that size of engagement from it as well, too, which means it's working, right? Yeah. All right. Great. So let's uh, go on to the next um, to, to the next category. So growth opportunities. Right. I think this is common because sometimes when people think well-being, uh, they, they tend not to focus on this. But it's such a huge part, I think, for an individual to have that opportunity to grow in their career and also have the opportunity, the opportunities given to them as well, too, as an organization. Right. So LinkedIn provides uh, their learning platforms with, through LinkedIn Learning. They provide workshops and conferences as well too. And they also financially support individuals for, for their education, right? Uh, which is great. I've had an opportunity to visit their Singapore office and you can feel the culture there that seems so, so positive. And when you, when you can experience that, you know, sort of tangible in an office, it means that it is working, right? Um, and Cisco offers flexible career parts where they do job rotation, mentorship, and of course, do continuously uh, learning uh, programs, right? Um, and job rotation, I find, is a great way to encourage and motivate staff uh, to, um, to sort of explore even different areas in the business that they might be interested in, right? And it's a hard thing to get managers or leadership to um i think buy into that because it affects roles that you know jobs that people are doing so i think you know to be successful to have a job rotation program is a great great initiative at mind valley you know we did a uh, two years ago no, I didn't mean Anlo. No, unfortunately, I didn't. I had a conference. I, I was it's probably about a thousand people, I think. Um, but at Mind Valley, um, what we did a focus group about two years ago, and this came out of one of the top three feedback points from our employees uh, that they wanted to have personal development and uh, professional growth, uh, and that drove our 
that drove our, our initiatives for the next two or three years in our, in specifically in the talent management team. So what we're focusing on is specific management training because you know that classic uh, um, that classic thing that we do where we, where we promote managers but we don't train them to be managers. Obviously we do that as well too here unfortunately. So we're focusing on doing specific training for management. We've highlighted uh, high potentials and doing uh, external development for them as well too. We've also partnered with LinkedIn Learning. So all of our employees have full access to LinkedIn Learning platform. And what we're using it for is not only employee-led uh, self-training, but also manager-led training. Right, so employees can go in and use those courses for development in any areas that they want to, and then we have a more focused training, uh, job related training that managers recommend. And it's something that we've only done now one year, we're doing a lot more PR for it this year, but we expect that it is going to uh, benefit us in the end, uh, you know, providing that those options for employees. And we also do, um, similar to LinkedIn. We financially support uh, external training for hypos as well. So, yeah. Now, this is quite common. Now, in our, uh, our platform, there are also courses that are focused specifically to professional growth, like this course from Pete Ferrazzi that's quite popular and becoming focused and indistractable by near. Now it's useful anyone again, like if you're, if you're having problems and it happens throughout your career that you're having challenges, you know, just focusing, right? People can go in, they can do refresher courses, just run through the courses, you know, throughout various times in their career or their time with us, and it's accessible to them. Yes, leadership for all. I like that. So. <laughs> I like that. So, so let's hear from you guys. Um, what uh, what sort of initiatives uh, does your company have? If you guys can continue sharing. Uh, um, what sort of initiatives? And please feel free to just put your mic on and share as well. So if you don't want to put your camera on, put your mic on and share with us uh, some of the initiatives that your companies have been using for this. So. Oh, shall I take it away? Uh Hey, Melissa. Uh, Hi. Nice to meet you. Uh, I've, I've been in many startups and, and companies where, where we've grown quite quickly and the teams have usually grown bigger and also corporates. And I think one thing that you mentioned immediately like struck me, which was the focus on high potentials. And, mm -hmm. I, and I feel like high potentials always get what, what they should get. Now, it's never really a problem for them. Any mm -hmm. company, wherever they go, there is always something for high potential. My question is, how, how do we focus or do so? And I think it kind of resonates with the leadership for all thing that Anna Maria that you just posted. How do we focus on getting the averages to high potentials? That I feel like is usually where we miss, and, I, and, and, I, and I'm guilty of it myself, like in my previous companies that I never paid much thought to it. But I think mm -hmm. that's, that's an area which, I'm quite curious about like if you have any uh, opinion on how do you do that at mind level. I think a lot, it's a combined responsibility between managers and let's say L and D, right? I think managers, um, when you become a manager, right? You, part of your job is developing your staff, right? And I think sometimes a lot of managers lose that focus and they don't pay attention because you have high potentials that it's obvious, right? But you have individuals who have potential that uh, is not that obvious. But when managers pay attention and spend time and invest time with their staff, I think that um, it's a great way for us to sort of highlight that, right? I have been blessed with uh, a fantastic leader who's my current leader, Alex, who, you know, I've worked with for the last seven years. And, you know, he continued to mentor me even when we weren't working together, right? He continued to mentor me. And it was, you know, he saw something in me that I don't think I saw myself as a young HR professional, you know, and he yeah. invested and he does it up until this day. Um, 
I think probably four of our staff who are in, in our current team at the moment have all worked with Alex in previous uh, in previous organizations. And he actually takes the time to invest in the people that he sees. And maybe he's got an eye for it, but um, he certainly put the time in for me, which has driven my career to where it is now. You know, driving, I think, um, limits that I didn't know that I had. Right. And uh, um, I'm certainly grateful for him. But I think when you become a manager, uh, that it's very important for you to pay attention to your to your staff and develop them. So I do put a lot of um, a lot of responsibility, I guess, to people managers in that sense. And then, you know, even us as, a, a, you know, my previous role was an HR business partner. Right. We contribute to that as well, too, because we can see those poten those potentials when we have conversations with individuals. We learn what their passion is. We learn some of the things that they don't even do inside the, the business, but they do outside on their own. And you can sense the passion and see their potential through that. So I think it, it takes a lot of investments of time of, you know, HR VPs or HR as a whole and the managers to see the, that potential in those that are not as obvious so. yeah yeah no it makes sense like definitely some of us get lucky uh with especially when it comes to, especially when it comes to having the right mentors and uh wow. i think i've been quite lucky as well on that front but i think we need to try and systemize it as much as possible uh, so one of one of our initiatives with our managers training is doing that so preparing our managers to see those high potentials for succession planning in the business, right? And, and it's not something that uh, every manager can see. We certainly have a mix of managers in, in our organization, right? But we do want managers to understand that and perhaps provide training for them in areas that uh, they feel they don't have that confidence or they don't have that skill set to do that, you know? So it's critical for us to also, as l &D professionals, provide that training and guidance and coaching to the managers that we have in place as well. All right, anyone else wants to share? I know a lot of the comments are coming in. I'm just trying to read them as quickly as I can. Yes, uh, we've, um, I, the, in my last telco company, we did run a woman in leadership um, uh, training, which was very, very useful. I think by the time I left, we had three uh, females sitting in our senior management team who were part of that training, which was great, so. Yes, and we encourage one-to-ones as well to in our business at Mind Valley. Once you join the team, we we encourage to set up uh, weekly cadences or monthly cadences, one-to-ones. Even if you don't have, uh, even if you don't have an agenda, it's a good opportunity to sort of just catch up, uh, right? So we encourage those one-to-ones regularly as well. All right. So, okay. So let's go on to work-life balance then, right? Um, so, you know, as post-COVID and, you know, even slightly before as well too, but even more so now, work-life balance is very important. So, so companies, I think it's critical for them to find ways uh, and methods to ensure there's work-life balance for all of their employees. At Buffer, what they do is flexi, uh, flexible hours, right? So employees can create their own work days with flexible hours. Of course, you need to also have sort of a mature work and um, a mature workforce as well to, to ensure that they don't take advantage of that. And managers need to, to manage that as well too. But that has led to higher job satisfaction and a uh, better work-life uh, balance, right? At Salesforce, what they do is a holistic work-life integration, right? So they've uh, they've uh, followed the OANA culture, right? Where it's more like a family-like environment. So they offer uh, health-related uh, reimbursement for expenses, but also on-site childcare, 
right, which helps tremendously with mothers uh, and gener generous parental leave as well, too, which, uh, you know, I think it's it's so important. That mindset, the peace of mind that it gives, I think, really contributes to that company loyalty at the end of the day, right? Now, at Mind Valley, like I said earlier, we have we are remote um, work first, right? So we have uh, a lot of um, a lot of our employees work from home and at the office. So for me personally, I try to come in three, two to three days a week, and then I work from home the rest of the days. But what's interesting in this organization as well, too, and this was an initiative of Alex when COVID hit and we had to come up with a new model. We employ a lot of our employees through employee of record. So we have employees located in th over 38 countries. And we we felt that that was important to not, uh, not encourage people to relocate and sort of move their entire family life to one of our offices, but allow them to stay in their environment and they can work from there, right? Most of our meetings happens virtually and it's worked just fine. You know, and I feel with that, we've had a lot more, we were able to get certainly a lot more talent, very talent, but we get that um, uh, loyalty as well too from them because we give them that flexibility, right? Um, so, yes. So what about you guys? What, I mean, I, I think a lot of companies have, uh, have also maintain that remote work i know some industries it's hard to do it but what sort of uh what sort of work-life balance initiatives uh have you have you guys um uh, been exposed to ah oh that's quite interesting um supriya how do you guys manage uh the workload when you've got uh, secondments? So it's more likely on a time basis, like for that particular three months or a six month period, it will be more of a rotational role that this uh, person will be performing and they'll have certain success metrics in terms of how to uh, analyze the impact at the end of the period. And it is more likely, I would say, based on the interests or, you know, if they continue having passion for that particular role, then probably we might look into further opportunities of a full-time uh, role within that path or else mm -hmm. they'll come back to their, uh, you know, the previous role that they were in. So the headcount remains stable, but it's just that they are given an opportunity for a time period. And during that time period, uh, you know, they're, original kind of work piece is to be managed within the team. So it would require wow. the managerial, uh, you know, kind of uh, confinement, the team's alignment as well, and also the person's interest in moving and trying something beyond. And we also kind of take in account uh, the person's previous kind of experience in and around that role, or what is it that has been driving the passion? Because it's not just that, you know, an employee is interested and we just kind of go in for secondment, rather we kind of try to analyze trains uh, their previous um, you know kind of hands-on with that role as well be before taking a decision but this route is still available is what I wanted to mention uh, for people to explore. Did you find that you had uh, hesitance from managers in those um, in those uh, divisions or departments how did you get around that? Yes. So there has been few cases where it was it was kind of, you know, kind of discarded. Uh, the request was discarded by the managers uh, because of ABC reasons, because, um, as I mentioned, it is not just the person's interests alone that play a role here. It's about uh, the, you know, the, the new team's uh, possession, the old team's kind of alignment and also uh, the managerial kind of uh, control over the project and the deadlines as well. So uh, if we if we could have any rotational people getting in, like in the place of the that employee was moving out, then that is where managers kind of agree. But it's more likely on a case by case basis that we actually, uh, you know, kind of look about the impact and the flavors of it. Right, I see. Okay, that's great. And we have had like three cases which were positive, uh, and we had the role uh, being played by that person, but we have also discarded few roles uh, because it didn't ah, kind of go out at that particular okay. timeline. Yes, which okay. is balance. Right. 
Great. Yes, the, the hybrid work environment, I think, certainly works for a lot of people, especially working, well, working families who have kids and, you know, they have that flexibility with their kids. Um, we certainly have that here. Uh, we, our office is open to bring your kids in as well. So we have a lovely office in the in, uh, KL, uh, that huge spaces. So um, we definitely encourage that. So. All right, I'm sorry if I can't get to all of the comments, but I hope everyone is uh, um, uh, paying attention to that as well too. All right, so let's uh, go into the supportive work culture, right? I'm just conscious of the time as well too. So it's important to provide that, uh, um, that work culture that promotes this as well. It's not just about the initiatives, but the business environment and the culture right at salesforce what they do is they do um recognition uh regular recognition and awards they do pay-to-pay -pay recognition as well too they have incentives that are tied to performance like most companies and they do personalized rewards which i think is very it, it's good because sometimes when you do uh just let's say a monetary reward it loses the essence of it so personalizing it is is great as well and at hubspot what they do is regular town meetings and open forums with leadership right um which is uh, i i think when it comes when information or support comes from leadership it speaks words right they've got transparent communication anonymous employee surveys where they're able to get that feedback and they encourage a culture of feedback which is great i think when when an employee or workforce feels comfortable to share feedback with you, it it says a lot of their trust in the company as well, too. I've worked in various organizations where when we ask for feedback, people are hesitant because they're not comfortable sharing. Even if we do it anonymous, they, they've said to me, they're like, oh, but you always have a way to tell who it is, right? Um, so if, if a workforce feels comfortable to give that feedback, I think it, it says a lot. So, now at Mind Valley, like most companies, we do recognition programs. Actually, after this call, we're doing sort of what we call a town hall. We do it weekly at Mind Valley. So we share business updates in that call. Um, we do culture initiatives on that call. And in this case, we're recognizing um, our staff members as well to uh, in the next town hall that we have in a, in a bit, right? Uh, we also celebrate diverse cultures. And the one of the attractions for me personally coming to the to this company was the diversity in in the business, right? We've got 52 I think different nationalities working in our organization so we try to incorporate all of those cultures right in Malaysia obviously it's multicultural as well too so we 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 celebrate all of the uh, culture holidays here and recognize those others as well too and we're also trying to now all of this is still a work in progress but we're trying to build a sense of community right when you work in an environment that you can build a community it encourages you to come in it encourages it encourages that productivity right so culture and, and engagement falls under my portfolio as well too and some of the things that we are trying to do is build those communities it doesn't have to be one entire workforce community but we are trying to build it one of our initiatives that we're trying to do with our remote work is sort of what we're terming as speed dating with our remote workers so it's virtual and it gives us it gives our staff an opportunity to sort of get to know each other right because a lot of times when we do virtual meetings you've got an agenda and you're just hitting through your agenda in the short space of time and you don't really get to know the individuals right so it's an initiative we're going to roll out at the end of next month where we encourage both virtual and physical employees to get to know each other through this uh virtual speed dating meeting so all right all right so i've missed some of the comments but if you guys can also share as well too what sort of initiatives um i know before um we spoke earlier in the beginning about the social connections right what sort of other initiatives have you got especially in an environment where 
we have a lot of remote workers and it is challenging different time zones. Mind Valley works in three different time zones. So Asia, Europe, and the US. So it's sometimes difficult to get the time zones right. But what have you guys uh, done in your organizations to, um, to encourage that? That is true. Leaders do have to drive this. Ah, oh, nice. Yes, exactly. I think that when you get to know people, it's um, so today is Thursday. So every Thursday at the Malaysian Mind Valley office, we do socials. So we encourage especially the new staff coming in as well to, to come in and mingle right with the staff um so that's one of the things that sort of forms those connections i we've got four new people starting that started on monday and they've already formed a connection you know they're, they're day ones uh, you know form this little group that's going out to lunch etc so and i saw someone earlier in the comments mention about um having uh coffee stations etc that's a great encouragement. As simple as it is, it's a great encouragement to have those conversations. So, you know, um, when I joined Mind Valley, I had done some research about what it was like to work here. And I remember one particular video saying that it's the people that make them come to work every day, you know. <laughs> My boss starts every time my boss calls or starts a meeting, he says, what's up? That's how he starts, just to get people sort of comfortable in sharing. It's like, what's up? <laughs> yeah, that's that's one of the things that I posted as well. Like, power of questions is so incredible. Uh, and if you go take it even one step further, like, we changed one of the questions to, like, what's on your mind? Yeah. That just leads to, like, magical level of connection then that is true yeah <laughs> it, it's very a very open question you know so um so there are some other things that companies have been doing we just have about 12 minutes again there's some other things that companies have been doing sort of increased automation even financial wellness which i think is a great a great great initiative uh they've got healthy options at work as well so now we at mind valley obviously part of our value is a healthy working culture right so we encourage that we have nutritionists who are coaches who are uh, employees here who share their knowledge as well too um collaborate Collaborative ergonomic workspaces, collaborative workspaces, I think is very important. So we're actually thinking about changing our workspace to have more collaborative workspaces, um, you know, uh, as because people tend to work from home. So when you're in the office, it's that time to sort of do that, right? So, Yes, we've got that as well. We've got an accolade program that we uh, that we do on Slack. So that's our communication channel here at the company. So we've got an accolade program that um, we, we do shout outs based on our values for the company. So one of the recognitions that we're doing in the town hall just now would be based on those accolades uh, as well, All right? All right, now, the thing is, there's, um, there's, there's so many initiatives that we can talk about, but it's not always successful, right? There are challenges and sort of setbacks that I've certainly faced, that I'm sure you have certainly faced as well too. But what I thought was important was, uh, you know, let's, let's consider the things that we do need to strategically think about when we're doing those initiatives, right? Of course, number one, you need to get leadership buy-in. It's important to get, so any initiative that we do, we run by our executives because they have to be the ambassadors to run that as well, right? So we run it by, get their buy-in and encourage them to push those initiatives with their staff. Then another thing that we did is uh, we got feedback from our employees. So 
we, I, I, I'm part of what we call a culture task force, an engagement task force, and we didn't want to come up with initiatives ourselves. So we've run surveys where we get feedback from the staff to give us ideas of things that they want to do, because we do want to um, consider their preferences as well in our initiatives, right? And then what we do as well is continuous evaluation. So at the end of some of the larger initiatives that we do, our L&D manager actually uh, does a feedback uh, survey. So we get feedback from all who have participated so we can take those learnings for the next time we're doing anything similar or the same thing again, right? And I think these are, sort of strategic considerations that you have to pay attention to when it is that uh, you are planning all of these initiatives. So. Various life levels, focus quiet areas, that's interesting. Yes, our, our culture task force is sort of geared around the same structure. So we meet, uh, we meet weekly, uh, once, uh, twice a month on brainstorming, and then twice a month on operations for things that, you know, are events and initiatives that are ongoing. And what we've done this year is that we've sort of shifted it a bit where we're doing a rotation every quarter because sometimes it's a lot to ask employees to commit to it. So we're doing a rotation and a volunteer um, basis as well too. Yeah. All right. Um, and then I think I just have one more slide, right? So yeah. So in terms of the challenges that you guys have faced, perhaps you guys can share um, some of the challenges from management or even feedback from the employees of initiatives that have been rolled out. And what, what sort of practices did you put in place to rectify those? Uh, Anyone wants to share? Ah, it is. I know by H, by the start of H2, I know my budget gets cut. So, so we try to push a lot of our major events in the first half of the year so that we can at least get it done. But it is, uh, you know, as much as I try to stress the importance of it, it's the it's it's sometimes the easiest thing to go to to cut budget. Yes, Anna Maria. I also worked in uh, uh, quite a few retail companies where we had our colleagues in the office and then we had our colleagues in the stores, which were clients facing. So they were always on, and that was a major challenge to deliver engagement and the same experience in terms of well being and engagement between the people that were sitting at the desk and the people that were constantly on the shop floor with with clients yeah. Yeah. And that was hard <laughs> and also we were sometimes I, another challenge i saw is um head office things that there's something that is really cool they roll it out they don't talk to anyone they don't talk to the let's say the end user the target audience and so that backfires usually so we kind of learned that everything we kind of put out there has to be co-designed with the colleagues that we are designing it for. So human-centered all the way, volunteers, test, and kind of bring people in at the drawing table. Yeah. Yeah, I worked in retail too, and I experienced that same challenge. Uh, what a lovely thing that our CEO did was that once a month, uh, the mm -hmm. staff that were working in the office would close the office half day, and we would yeah. go out uh, to the retail shops and help them. Yeah, yeah, we did that too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Great. Yes, I see a hand raised. Um, for us, I would agree with Anna Maria as well. I think that's where our employee-led network has been successful, um, because normally these initiatives are seen by driven by HR, or you know, mm -hmm. and people tend to not engage. But if it's if they see their colleagues or their peers being the spokesperson or the hosts, they are more inclined to going, okay, this is more of a safer environment. I don't know why it is. They think like, oh, HR is here; they're going to listen to my secrets, and it's like no. Um, so that I think is the challenge but it's also great when you've got good working ELNs and I think our role 
is to support them and to set them up for success so that they can be the face of these yeah. sort of initiatives. Yeah, it makes a big difference. I would agree with you when it doesn't necessarily come from HR. Um, I, you know, we've got such a bad rep sometimes of trying so many initiatives. So it's great to have that buying where it's driven also from, from the division. So, yeah. Any other challenges? Um, some of the challenges, I guess, that I've faced is that, uh, some of the challenges that I've faced as well too, certainly the budget, um, we we get, because it's it takes time and sometimes our executives, uh, uh, though they want us to do it, they do not have the time to contribute to it. And I'll give you an example, you know, one of the recognitions that we're doing here today, we've asked our executives to send us, you know, just a voice note or just a video sort of um, recognizing the employees that we have highlighted. And it's taken us two weeks to get it uh, right, which has delayed our delivery of it. And uh, it, it takes so much, I guess, effort from us as HR, even our own boss, he's on leave at the moment and we had to hound him down for it. Um, the, it's, the challenge I face is that though the executives want it and they, they do see a benefit to it, it's very hard sometimes when it comes to their contribution to actually do it, so, you know? Um, and it just, uh, we just need to constantly drive the value to them, right? Um, so that they can see it, so. I, it's, I, I've seen both sides of the equation, <laughs> <laughs> which is in one case, uh, it's a lot of lip service, but a lot less action. And, and in the other side where it's action and lip service and you know like if in the first case it's almost like you really cannot do anything about it like sure yes we think it's great we should do uh, well-being however numbers are what i need to see and that's that's all i care about and no no matter what you can do unless that real mindset changes yeah it's almost like yeah. impossible and it, it takes a lot to get it done but that's where the 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 data comes in right where we can show the difference in it so we can show you know try to show as tangibly as we can the impact <laughs> that it makes so, so, sorry can you maybe uh, melissa can you maybe share like one or two and whatever uh within that you can one or two of these most insightful data points, because usually data points is what works for leadership. Right. What was maybe the one or two data points that you found were the most impactful in getting them to open their eyes and be like, ah, okay, I think this works. Uh, that's a tough question. Um, Gosh, I don't, so I, I would probably draw a reference to the use of our AAP, right? Because uh, uh, a lot of these initiatives, so I've, I've joined the business now, like I said, about a year and a half, right? Prior to me joining, we did not have anyone focusing on this, mm -hmm. uh, right? No one sort of paying attention to the engagement uh, and uh, beyond just the events and stuff that we do from a social standpoint, the other aspects of engagement, right? So that stuff is still being built out. Um, you know, to be honest with you, and probably don't repeat this when he when he joins you for the next session, my boss, Alex, though he values culture, he is not one to contribute to ideas or that sort of, he leaves it up to me. He knows how passionate I am about it. And that's how, how we sort of balance each other. But uh, he is one for numbers because he's also our acting COO in the business. So of yeah, course, looking at numbers, right? So, um, but I would say I draw reference to the use of our EAP, right? Um, we had to renew the contract uh, probably about a year ago. And I don't have the specific uh, figures I asked for it, but it wasn't given to me on time. But we had to use our data to validate 
the renewing of the contract. And the data was actually quite surprising of how many uh, employees actually use it because it's anonymous as well too. So no one really pays, uh, to, you know, sees that on a regular basis. So we pulled the data and it was very surprising to see how many people use it uh, and it validated or used or, or um, desire to renew that as a benefit to our employees because, you know, Alex, who's our manager, thought you know it wasn't being utilized at all you know and when we pull the data we actually saw that yeah you know it's it's a benefit and it may not be the entire workforce but it was a significant amount from my from what i remember yeah can, can i share something on that like what might help what has definitely helped because i've been on both sides of the equation is at one point we we had like this initiative and some employees were taking part in it and then we asked specifically those employees that, hey, if you can give like a rating of this initiative, how much impact did it make in your, let's say, business performance? Mm -hmm. That created like a very strong link between, okay, yes, they're oh, using it, and, it's, and the use is actually driving business performance. Then you will have all the budget. It was easy. <laughs> it was easy. That is a very good point because it has to tie back. And it's it's good to have the perspective from both sides. But yeah, that's the selling point, right? Yeah. If you can tie it back to that overall performance, that's uh -huh. the selling point there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that always works. <laughs> that's very true. So I've come to the end of it, guys. Uh, thank you so much for sharing uh, the feedback from you. Um, and I just sort of wanted to leave with this just sort of one note, right? The entire change, uh, you know, of prioritizing whole being, it's, it cannot happen overnight, right? It's, it's, it's a journey that we need to take, learnings as well too, that we need to take from feedback from, from the employees. But it's certainly a journey. And I, I'm happy to say that because I'm very passionate about this and I want to leave this as sort of a legacy with the Mind Valley culture, that I'm happy to say that that journey has started with us and I see the changes and I see the progression of it. So, you know, so great. Thank you. Thank I want to thank you guys again. Melissa, thank you very much for uh, hosting today and opening up the floor for such a conversation. There's gold in the chat. I'll do my best to pull it out and make a nice thank resume <laughs> for the community. We've already mentioned Alex Tons. He's hosting a session for us next month. So I already feel we know him very well. He's going to talk about <laughs> leading with purpose. So if you have not signed up, I put the link in the chat. And if you want to connect with Melissa on LinkedIn, I also put her LinkedIn in the chat. Thank um, you. Let's give her a big round of applause. Show her lots of love and appreciation for today. Nice. Thank you, everyone, for taking time to learn in your busy day. I'll see you around and wish you a beautiful rest of the day. Yes. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone.